A wide variety of pictures of Jesus are available all over the world. A picture of Jesus in the lap of Virgin Mary and a picture of him preaching and even a picture of Jesus crucified in various different forms are most common. Depicting Jesus has been a common practice for a long time. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and in this episode, I'll be sharing 10 of some of the earliest depictions of Jesus Christ that are available to us today. Now we jump into this episode, starting at number 10, we have the Good Shepherd. In the mausoleum of Gala Placidia in Ravenna, Italy, there is a display of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. It was built around 430 and blue and gold glass on the ceiling shows hundreds of stars that lead upwards towards a cross and the display of Jesus Christ can be seen at the entrance. He wears the purple and gold of an emperor and he holds a staff that is joined to a cross and this shows a connection of political power to the divine power of Jesus. Okay, so for number nine, on the doors of Santa Sabina. This church was completed in 432 and the building stands in its original state, but it's stripped in some places of its mosaics. We can see the crafting of Jesus on wooden doors of the church and the wooden doors of the church have survived till now. And the scenes of Jesus that are crafted on the doors are taken from the Bible. They are crafted from cedar wood and in one of these pictures, we can see Jesus as a long hair and bearded man hanging from a cross. The depicting at number eight shows Jesus trampling on beasts. The tiny archbishop chapel in Ravenna shows Christ standing on the necks of a lion and a snake. Now this imagery is based on the Bible. In the book of Psalms 91 verses 13, it tells us that if you love God, you will be able to tread on the lion and the cobra and you will trample the great lion and the serpent. In this, we can see Jesus as a warrior wearing armor and a cloak, and he's holding a cross as a weapon. And this chapel was raised during a conflict between different Christian sects. So this chapel displays Jesus as a warrior to protect it. The healing of a bleeding woman is a depiction at number seven. In the Bible, in the book of Mark chapter five, verses 25 to 34, it tells a story in which a woman was bleeding for 12 years and she comes to Jesus in a crowd of people and she touched his cloak and just by touching it, she was completely healed. Jesus told her that it was her faith that had healed her and this scene is painted on the walls of the catacombs in a city in Rome. Number six brings us a depiction of Jesus healing a paralyzed man. It is one of the best known stories of the New Testament of the Bible. And in this depiction, Jesus is healing a paralyzed man. The friends of the paralyzed man are eager to take him to Jesus. So through the roof of the house that Jesus was in, they lower him down on a bed, like a, a mat bed. And when Jesus saw this, he simply asked the man to take up his mat bed and walk and go home. And the man was healed immediately. So yes, this depiction is of that story and the image can be seen in church in Syria. Jesus is in the middle and the man with his mat bed can be seen on the left. We're halfway through this episode. At number five, we have the Virgin and the Child. When archeologists dug into the catacombs of Priscilla in Rome, they found a ruin. And 200 years earlier, the tombs have been stripped on the orders of the papacy. Sarcophagi had been smashed and mosaics were torn down. No one is sure about what exactly happened here. Now the fragments are historically important, but the paintings from the third century are very valuable. Many of these paintings show women and women can be seen as preachers in some of these paintings, but the oldest images are of Jesus Christ as a child and his mother, the Virgin Mary. 
Coming in at number four, we have the St. Callisto Good Shepherd. In the third century, church father Tertullian described how Romans blamed Christians for all of their troubles. And he said this, and I quote, they think the Christians are the cause of every public disaster, of every affliction with which the people are visited. If the Tiber rises as high as the city walls, if the Nile does not rise or send its waters over the fields, if the heavens do not not rain, if there is an earthquake, famine, or pestilence, the cry is immediate. Away with the Christians to the lions. So yeah, it's obvious why Christians needed so many underground places to store the remains of their martyrs and various different religious relics. Now the catacombs of Callisto is such a place. On the walls, you can see Jesus as a good shepherd and he can be seen carrying a water bottle and bearing a lamb on his shoulder. Number three leads us to Hinton St. Mary Mosaic. This place belonged to a Roman family and it once covered the dining room floor. We can see a mix of Christian and pagan imagery and scenes of hunting. Now in the center, we can see a beardless man flanked by two pomegranates and we can link him with Jesus through the background signs of the picture. We can see the Greek letters chi and rho in the background and these letters are the initials of Christ's name. Moving on now to number two, Christ nailed to the cross. The earliest depictions of the death of Jesus Christ can be seen in the British Museum. Three panels show the passion of Christ, which is carved in ivory. These three panels form the sides of a Roman casket and Jesus Christ is nailed through his palms to the cross and Rex IVD, King of the Jews, is carved over his head. We end this episode off at number one, the piece of graffito. Now we made it to number one in this episode. We look at this piece of graffito. The oldest known image of Jesus is said to be a mocking piece of graffiti. The Alexamenos graffito is also known as the graffito blasphemo or the blasphemous graffito. The images were found carved in plaster in Rome and show a man staring up at a crucified figure. And if we look closer at the cross, we can see that the head of the person is the head of a donkey. And underneath we see the word scribbled, Alexamenus worships God. Yeah, very interesting. All right, guys, this wraps up this episode on 10 of the oldest depictions of Jesus Christ. Let me know what you think about this episode. Sound off down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. And if you viewers are new here to FTD Facts, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. It's free, free of charge. You definitely don't want to miss our new episodes. We post videos daily like this. So if this topic interests you, don't forget to join the FTD Facts family and I'll catch you guys in the next one.